In this video, I'm going to tell you what to do with your pile of shame and show you that miniatures kits are never useless. I've been a wargamer for a long time, and I am also not what you would call a, a minimalist by any stretch of the imagination. I have a lot of miniatures in my collection, and by my collection, I mostly mean my basement. Uh, stuff from Games Workshop, Star Wars Legion, uh, WizKids, Malifaux, uh, War Games Atlantic, Stargrave, Frostgrave, all kinds of weird and small little companies and all that kind of stuff. And these are like literally the ones that I can think of off the top of my head. There are probably thousands of models in my basement. And I'm mostly okay with it. You may hear the term pile of shame and also pile of potential thrown around a lot online. These two phrases are referring to your, you know, unbuilt and unpainted miniatures in your collection. Uh, yet both have very different meanings, it seems. The pile of shame is a reference to the shame that you're supposed to feel uh, you know, from having so many models and kits in your possession that you haven't built or painted yet. The opposite of this, of course, is the type of person who doesn't buy any miniatures or terrain until they've finished painting their current models. You hear about that online sometimes, too. I've never been one of those. Some people use the term pile of potential as a euphemism, and, and some use it as a coping mechanism, right? For dealing with their, you know, perceived pile of shame. Whereas others, including myself, use the term non-ironically to talk about the actual potential in having a big collection of miniatures in your basement, or your garage, or your closet, or your attic, or maybe even like in your crawl space. But it's, it's kind of gross. Anyway. Whatever. In general, there's nothing wrong with having a big collection of miniatures kits. It, it does have its upsides, but it can have its downsides as well. Now, just to get this out of the way, I'm not telling you to become a, a shameless consumer. Late stage capitalism is a hell of a thing, but you know, here we are. That's all I'll get into here about that. I'm also not telling you to spend more money than you can comfortably afford on miniatures either. I don't spend massive amounts of money on miniatures at any given time, but doing it here and there over the last few decades, well, it's built up, right? That all said, sometimes companies send me stuff as well, which also adds to the collection, you know, so your mileage may vary. So let's talk about money while we're getting things out of the way. Sometimes you can find deals like sales at local shops or, you know, great prices at game store swap meets or eBay or Facebook marketplace or, or whatever, right? Buying when the buying is good is something that I do from time to time and it helps to build your collection more cheaply. If you're the type that only buys when the current stuff is painted, then you probably miss out on some of these deals. Also, you probably aren't a kit basher, which I'll get back to in a minute. All that said, you should know how much you can and can't spend on miniatures. You don't obviously want to be buying miniatures or other hobby stuff when you know doing so will make you unable to pay your bills like rent or electricity or food or anything like that. I don't care how good a deal is on some kit, it's not worth going hungry or getting evicted. Also, I wouldn't suggest buying hobby stuff on credit, like a credit card or whatever, either. I actually made a, a whole video about this years ago. Pachow. So you can learn more over there. The last thing that you want your hobby, your enjoyable pastime to do, is to add stress to your life. So be conscious of how much money you spend, certainly, right? Some people have a very low threshold for having kits and boxes sitting around, uh, you know, and they see them as wasted money, right? So if that's you, you probably won't agree with the rest of this video. That's okay. It's not for everyone. But there are also good reasons to spend money when you can and build your pile of potential for a rainy day. 
There's also a problem of space, of course. Um, I am lucky enough to have a basement to put stuff in and a wife who doesn't get too annoyed by it. She's into knitting, right? So she gets most of the second floor of the house and has a lot of yarn and yarn adjacent stuff up there. And, and yarn can take up a whole lot of space itself, right? But maybe you don't have that kind of space available to you. Maybe you live with family or roommates or live in a very small apartment or something. Space is finite and not everyone can have an assigned hobby space in their living situation. You only have so much space and so much money, right? Of course. However, I still think that it's a good idea to build a pile of potential if you can. Maybe not and maybe not even really like an entire pile, maybe just like a stack of potential, you know, or maybe a heap of potential, perhaps a jumble. Either way, I've mentioned the downsides so far in this video, and now I'm going to explain the upsides and some tips on how to get there if you're interested. Why would you even want something called a pile of shame anyway? Well, I don't honestly think that there's any shame in it. If it were fruit, or vegetables, or some other kind of perishable that you were keeping in your basement or your spare closet and not eating or sharing with others, then there'd certainly be shame, right? You'd be wasting food and mainly just creating a, a pile of squishiness, most likely, or a pile of fruit flies, you know, and that would also be gross. But these kits that we store they don't really go bad. They don't perish, right? Sometimes they actually gain a little bit of value. I have a copy of an add-on for Games Workshop's Blackstone Fortress called Escalation. I bought Blackstone Fortress from my local shop. GW didn't send it to me or anything like that. I remember buying it on a Black Friday, which I don't normally do, right? And then I later started buying some of the expansions as well, including Escalation. About a year or more later, a video commenter mentioned looking for it and that it was like nowhere to be found. It was out of print and you couldn't find it anywhere. I looked it up uh, today and there were sales on eBay, not listings, but actual sold items of Escalation for nearly $400. Now, I'm not telling you to speculate on Games Workshop models, right? Like no one likes a scalper, not even their mothers. But some models can retain their value, and very few might even increase. So this is certainly an upside to your pile of potential. If you buy a kit because you like it and you see yourself using it at some point someday, and then it turns out that you don't use it right at all, then there's probably someone else out there who might like it, especially if you've had it a while and it's no longer available for sale. Miniatures kits are never useless. Another use of your pile of potential Kit bashing, as I mentioned before, I own a ton of Necromunda models. For a little while, I owned all the Necromunda kits that GW made during kind of the early days of the new Necromunda back in like 2017, 2018 and stuff like that. Then, of course, GW just went totally ham and produced more Necromunda stuff than anyone could really justify. And so I don't have it all anymore for certain. However, I've never actually played Necromunda, and I never really even planned to. I wanted all those early kits because they're amazing for kit bashing. Kit bashing is great fun and really allows you to make your models your own. Sometimes it's as simple as just like a head swap, right? And sometimes it's cutting and sculpting and making a single model out of like a half dozen different kits. But either way, you generally need access to parts to be able to properly kit bash. Sometimes they're just like leftovers that you have from kits that you've already built, right? It's always a, a good idea to cut all of the extra little parts off of sprues that you've already used, and then you can put those extra little parts into a big general bag, you know, and then dig through that later, or in a specialized like organized containers or something like that, or whatever. It's up to you. And sometimes you buy entire kits because you know you'll be able to use them for kit bashing on dozens and dozens of models in the future. This is 
what I did with the Necromunda models that I mentioned, and with like tons of the Blackstone Fortress models I've bought, and most of the Warhammer Underworlds warbands I've picked up, and countless others. I love to buy weird bits uh, from bits sellers, you know, that you find online or at conventions, and other bits makers like Puppets War and Cromlech and Anvil Industry and a whole bunch of other ones. I have an entire shoebox of just heads for kit bashing. Miniatures kits are never useless. And then, of course, there's sometimes the FOMO, the fear of missing out that trains us, right? Like Games Workshop loves making new stuff and then selling out of that new stuff and then not making any restocks uh, for those things. This has been happening like more and more recently. So if you come across a thing that you've been looking for, maybe online in a local shop, whatever, you probably want to buy it now because you might not be able to get it later. Now, yes, this does kind of lean in a little bit more into the FOMO, but if you turn out not using it, you can probably sell it for a decent price, like I mentioned before. Miniatures kits are never useless. So this is all great, Uncle Adam, but, but, but where do I put it all, I hear you say? Well, I will try to give you some tips that I've learned over my career, you know. Um, number one, if you buy a kit and, and then you don't even open it for a long time, like a year or two, like you buy it, you come home with it, you're like, I'm so glad I got this, you put it on the shelf, and then a year or two goes by and you haven't opened it yet. Um, then I start thinking about either selling it because I haven't even dug around in it for kit bashing bits or, uh, you know, kind of getting it off of the shelf and maybe putting it in a cardboard box or one of those like plastic totes, right? Now, yes, that does kind of cause a little bit of out of sight, out of mind, but it also helps kind of cut down on visual clutter when I'm looking for specific things during kit bashing. If it's a box you've already opened because you've actually used parts out of it for kit bashing, or maybe you've even like built full models out of that box for whatever projects that you've been working on, then maybe throwing out just the box, the cardboard, and keeping the sprues and you know maybe the instructions if necessary, maybe that's a good idea. This is really only useful if you don't have much space or are like really, really organized, right? Boxes take up room. And, and putting lots of sprues in like plastic totes or bigger boxes can help save space. But I sometimes find that I can't like find parts that I need as much as I can when I can see the boxes, right? Your mileage may vary. The last option is to get those kind of organizing cases for like fishing tackle or craft stuff or whatever. You probably know what I'm talking about. And then fill all the little chambers, little different compartments with different bits. You know, cut all of the parts off of the sprues, kind of so you separate the different arms and then the guns and then the heads and the, the torsos and, and whatever. And then you can get rid of the sprues and the boxes, saving you honestly so much space at that point. The only downside is that these days, Games Workshop cuts up their models so weirdly as they kind of put them on the sprue that it is really hard to like separate them into different body parts for easy storage. You know, it used to be like heads and torsos and this. And in some of the models, it's real weird. Most other companies still do it the right way, in my opinion. So kind of keep that in mind. Believe me, there's not much of a better feeling than like wanting to make a model or like a warband of models for some game, especially some sort of miniature agnostic game, and then just shopping your collection and finding all the parts that you need already in your basement or your closet or, or whatever, whether it's building it kind of as instructed or kit bashing and making something completely different than other people's models. Having all the parts right there to keep up your momentum in your hobby is highly beneficial. Remember, miniature kits are never useless. So hopefully you feel better about your alleged pile of shame and do think of it as a pile of potential. There's so much you can do with those models that you have. And again, remember, miniatures kits are never useless. 
If you liked this video, please hit the little like button down there below. It really kind of helps the video and this channel, and it kind of gets this message out in front of more people, more wargamers who are getting into the hobby. If you'd like to see more videos like this one every single Friday, then you can hit the subscribe button down there as well. It's free to do so. Thanks for watching.